Welcome to this presentation on top dressing. Top dressing describes the action of applying a thin layer of material over a turf grass surface. The material used for top dressing is usually sand, soil, compost, or a combination of all. There are several reasons why top dressing is an important part of any turf management program. Firstly, top dressing material is used to maintain a consistent, firm, plain surface. The material is applied and dragged or brushed across the turf to make sure that undulations, depressions, or holes are filled in. The second role that top dressing plays in turf management is to reduce the bulk density of the native or push-up greens or fairways. This particular picture shows a soil profile that has been deep tined and then had sand added to it to reduce compaction and to open up drainage channels through the soil. As we can see from this chart, sand increases the amount of air spaces in the soil and also reduces the tendency for that soil to become compacted. Frequent top dressing is often used to build a new root zone on top of a heavy or native soil surface. In this case, a sand top dressing layer is being built up above the native soil on this green. In this picture, sand top dressing a fairway has resulted in an approximately 4 to 5 inch sand layer above the soil. The third reason top dressing is applied to turf is to dilute thatch. Thatch is a layer of organic material that builds up between the grass plant and the soil. It is made up of plant residues like old crowns, roots, stolons, and rhizomes. Grass clippings do not contribute to the thatch layer since they break down quickly. Some thatch is actually a good thing on putting greens in that it provides a little cushion to receive a golf shot. But once it becomes thicker, let's say greater than a half inch, it can hold water and cause problems associated with shallower rooting. Thatch is naturally broken down or decomposed by earthworms and other organisms in the soil. But if the rate of thatch buildup is quicker than the rate of decomposition, and if it becomes excessive, then it's a problem. On putting greens constructed with sand root zones, there are devoid, which are devoid of earthworms, then thatch must be controlled by the turf manager through coring and top dressing. Top dressing helps to control thatch by diluting it, which means the top dressing soil mixes with the thatch. Organisms in the soil can now decompose the thatch, but most importantly the thatch is diluted so that it is not a discrete spongy layer at the top of the soil. The fourth reason top dressing is applied to turf is in conjunction with renovation. The combination of coring, seeding, and top dressing provides much greater benefits than any one of those practices performed alone. The top dressing material covers the seed helping to retain moisture and preventing seed movement. So in summary, top dressing helps to smooth and firm the playing surface, reduce bulk density, dilute thatch and organic matter that accumulates, and helps in turf establishment. There are numerous top dressing materials. A golden rule of top dressing is to match the material with the underlying soil. This is particularly important on sand root zones. On native soil root zones, top dressing materials can include a good quality sandy topsoil, pure sand, a combination of sand and compost, a combination of sand and calcined clay, or any combination of these materials. If one of the goals of top dressing is to improve drainage, then sand is typically the governing material, since adding it will improve infiltration rates over time. On sand root zones, top dressing materials are generally composed of pure, clean sand or a combination of sand and calcined clay. The calcined clay is sometimes added to help retain moisture or help provide firmness. Not all sands are the same. There are specific criteria for sands used on native soil or sand root zones. Particle size distribution, uniformity, shape and chemical makeup are all important factors. Local sand suppliers should be able to offer information on their sand products 
that includes details on each of these criteria. Sands are classified by the size of their particles. As shown here, fine gravel contains granular particles greater than 2 millimeters in diameter, while fine sands have much smaller diameters of a tenth to a quarter millimeter. As a general rule of thumb, medium coarse uniform sands are used on native soils with slightly smaller particles introduced on sand root zones. Finer particles of sand are used on sand root zones to ensure surface stability. Basically, the coarser the sand, the less stable or firm it is. A common top dressing sand used on native soils would adhere to the United States Golf Association sand, highlighted here in yellow. With 60% of the sand particles in the medium coarse size range, this sand is considered a uniform medium coarse sand. Finding a good local sand supplier is the key to a good top dressing program. It's also important to get to know the materials and what they look like. Looking at these four materials, which do you think is uniform coarse medium sand? This is predominantly silt and clay. The one up in the top right hand corner, this one is predominantly or has contains a little bit of gravel. And then the one down in the left hand corner contains too much gravel. Actually, it's all gravel. The sand in the bottom right is the uniform medium coarse sand. Once you are familiar with uniform medium coarse sand looks like and feels like, it makes quality control of top dressing products much easier. There are several ways to apply top dressing materials. The oldest method is applied by hand. The material should be dry so that it can be applied swiftly and uniformly. For larger areas, dry materials, namely sand, can be also applied with rotary spreader and lightly dragged in. There are many top dressing machines available, some belt driven, some with a rotating disc. Larger machines obviously hold more material in the hopper, so the need to be restocked less frequently. To get the most benefit from a top dressing application, it is usually done in conjunction with some kind of soil cultivation, like coring or tiny. Poking a hole in the soil that is filled with a granular material like sand improves surface drainage capabilities. Some golf course superintendents like to apply top dressing first and then run the cultivator over the top to disperse the top dressing material down into the holes. Lastly, we'll look at rates and frequency of top dressing material. Generally, the amount of top dressing material, and in this case, I'm basing this on 100% sand top dressing program, is a goal of about 25 to 50 cubic feet per thousand square feet for the year. When you think about it, this is a considerable amount of sand that needs to be applied to help control or manage organic matter or thatch. How the sand is applied is normally a combination of coring and filling the cores and applying light frequent applications of sand through the season, normally to a depth of about 3 millimeters every 7 to 10 days. You would like to top dress frequently enough to get a uniform sand profile as shown here versus this photograph where layering has occurred. The layers are the dark lines in the sand profile. This concludes this presentation on top dressing.